Brother Dean, thank you for ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean, how you guessed it. I did bring with my some props. I brought with my with me here two stalks of wheat. Now, if we look at the stalks of wheat, the truth is this is the staple of our diets. This is probably one of the most important plants that ever have have been cultivated and we grow. But what can we learn from the stalk of wheat? And the truth is I would love to speak about it, but time is short and I'm going to skip everything. We're just going to get to just one, one detail of the stalk of wheat. Just one kernel. <laughs> and that's as follows. This is what the rabbis saw when they saw a stalk of wheat. They learned an unbelievable lesson. They said, notice that the stalk of wheat had gone into the ground as a beer kernel, one seed. When it came up, God did not want it to come up undressed. God wanted to make sure that it will come up with tzniot, it will come up modest, covered, and therefore you cannot see the kernels. You could pick off one, and it has that long nose, that hair, which actually the turtles sends away the animals. You see, you can't, it has little micro, different things that the animals can't bite into it. And then you get the chaff and all the other things, and there's one layer and another layer and another layer until you finally get to that kernel of seed. Unbelievable. That little kernel is so wrapped up. And the sages learn from this an important lesson. They say when somebody will come back to life after Tchiyas HaMesim, when the dead is resurrected, we're going to come back. Are we going to come back wearing clothing or not? And the Gemara tells us, Kabochaymer Mechito, we can learn from the wheat. If wheat, God did not want the wheat to come up undressed, we are not going to come up undressed, we're going to come up clothed. And therefore, they learned, when they saw this wheat, they said, wow, God is going to bring us back with clothing. Look at the wheat. God did it to the wheat, he'll do it to us as well. Incredible. What a connection. How in the world are, we, are they learning that from the wheat? And the answer is because in Jewish thought we understand that when somebody dies and they and the body is now lifeless, we don't dispose of it. We don't have like some dilemma. What do we do with the body? How can we get rid of it? Um, how, how natural and green can we be with this body to make sure it doesn't leave its mark on civilization? That's not what they're worried about. They say when the body is lifeless, we now bury it just like we bury that seed. When we bury that seed, we're not forgetting about it. We're depositing it, and it's going to get watered, and it's going to sprout up again. So too, when the body is lifeless, and there's nothing, that body is not dead, just like that seed is not dead. There are hundreds of years old, there are seeds hundreds of years old, and they put it in the ground, they cultivate it, and it becomes alive again. Look at that. And therefore, the body is not lifeless. It's going to go into, it is lifeless, but it's going to go into the ground. And at one time, God is going to sprinkle on it, Tal Shel Tchia, that dew of resurrection, and we're all going to come up. When that moment comes, after Mashiach comes, and it's going to be Tchia Samesim, the resurrection of the dead, the cemeteries are going to look like fields of grain. Everyone is going to come up after that water, or whatever that Tal Shel Tchia is, that dew of resurrection, and we're all going to come back. And therefore, it's not that the body is, is useless and let's try to get rid of it. And so many different cultures came up with creative ways of getting rid of the body and, and seemingly finding purpose in such a complicated stage of existence. But really, the life is not over. The life has just finished the first stage and it's going to be carefully, with such care <laughs> and, such, and such attention, it's going to be put away so that it will come back the right way and the body is never gone the body is never gone that is how the jews understand it and that is really the subject of this week's parsha, this week's torah portion and that is really the continuation of last week yitzchok was laying on the akeda on the altar he was ready to be a sacrifice and he gave himself up he was laying there imagine he said his goodbyes he's ready he sticks out his neck he's ready at that moment, God says, no, 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 don't touch him, don't do anything. So they unbind Yitzchak, and he's ready to come up, and he's like, well, I was really ready for that one. What am I supposed to do now? No, he said, you know what? I was gone. I, I died. 
I now have a second life for me to live. And he got up and he stated the bracha that we say in Shemana Esrei, the second blessing, Baruch HaTo Hashem, Mechayei HaMesim, God will resurrect the dead. And now that he just created this existence of resurrecting the dead, now his mother, Sarah, can die. Because now when she's going to die, she's not gone. She's just finished her first stage. She's going to be buried actually in Ma'ara Samach Pelo, which means a double cave, which means there's a bottom and there's a top. There's this existent, and it's still ready for the next existent. There's a machpelah, it's double. There's another existent that is going to be ready. And once Yitzchak, once Isaac on that altar created the existence of a new life, and ending this life is not the end of it, now Sarah was able to, be res uh, to die because now she's able to be put away to be resurrected. On the contrary, someone who doesn't know what to do with his body, he... He says he wants to be cremated or put in some mausoleum or some or or, or, or given up for medical research or anything like that. He is he's making a declaration that his body is gone. He, there's nothing left to him. It's it's unimportant. His body is not real, and therefore he just made a declaration that I'm not going to come back by Tchias Mason when all the dead are resurrected. And the Mishnah in Sanhedrin tells us that anyone who doesn't believe it doesn't get it, and we'll all be there, and he'll be missing because he made a clear declaration that his life and his body is not going to come back and therefore our lives are not over when our souls leave our bodies but on the contrary we are simply like a piece of stalk we are simply like a seed that we take out and we put into the ground and we're just going to come right back when that time comes and therefore it's a great comparison that's a beautiful beautiful lesson to learn from the wheat because our bodies are that seed that is not finished with and we're not destroying it and it's not lifeless once we put it into that ground we're just waiting for the right uh, the right moisture and the right everything to come and it's just going to come back together and as we we say Shaniska that we should be Zoicha the Maisa Mashiach will let Chiesa Mason Mason when we all be we all personally we should all merit to come to that existence when Mashiach the Messiah is gonna come and we'll all be there during Chiesa Mason, the resurrection of the dead. Amen.